Here's something you do got to watch if you haven't already. Last night okay. on on Silent Live, Dave Chappelle. Oh my goodness! Did you watch it? Did you get to watch it? Yes. Oh my goodness! It was hilarious. It was I so it. funny, and like a lot of, of course, you're getting people split down the middle. You know, some people that don't really like some of the stuff Dave Chappelle's been joking about as of late. Have uh, they're like, oh no, he's not funny. But man, I think Dave Chappelle is hilarious. And one of the things that I always loved about Dave Chappelle. And this is why I think it splits people down the middle is he likes to tiptoe around the controversial, Mm -hmm. but he does it, you know, with a huge grin on his face. Like we're all in on the joke, you know what I mean? And yeah, some people don't get the joke and I get it, but man, I thought it was funny. And then some things I think are kind of interesting too, is like people like, oh, well, you know, he had to do like a 20 minute monologue because the show's so bad now. And I was like, well, <laughs> he kind of always does a long monologue. Yeah. And then they were like, well, why did he have to do it so political? I was like, well, he, he's been doing this as of lately. Do you watch the show at all? Because <laughs> he, you know, he, right. he's been doing this to where he comes on after the election. And so. Well, and it, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, so of course it's, you know, in the air, it's polit- It's going to be political. Yeah, and it's topical. I mean, right? W- w- what's the, you know, the, if you watch SNL, you know they are very political. Um, they talk about politics all the time because you know a lot of these politicians are doing some you know off the wall things and saying off the wall stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um. And then, and if you know any comedian, they talk about stuff like this. Right. So it's just like, like, what are you talking about? And like you said, do you watch SNL? Like, do you normally their, their, uh, uh, their first sketch before, you know, the opener is them always doing something political. Like the first, like, I want to say the last few episodes of is them making fun of Fox news. So, you know, Come on, guys, pay attention. Yeah, uh, well, and then there's there like uh, there's other things that people always say about Silent Live that kind of make me laugh. Or like <clears throat> they've just been political lately. Well, no, like go back and watch Silent Live from the seventies. Like mm-hmm. they were political, and some of the political stuff they talked about was kind of shocking when you look back at it now. Yeah, and of course, like the first one ever, I believe, was hosted by George Carlin. So. Mm. <laughs> like Dave Chappelle being on Silent Live is totally on point. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I do, I do admit because I've been watching Silent Live since the nineties when, <clears throat> and when it, when it first caught my eye, everybody was talking about it because you had Chris Farley, you had Adam Sandler, you had Mike Myers, mm-hmm. you know, and then they started making all the movies back then, you know, the Wayne's world and all that kind of stuff. And so, yeah. so yeah, uh, that was a great era. And then I think the next, one of the other better eras as of, you know, since then was when you had Will Ferrell and you had Jimmy Fallon and you had some of those other characters that it, where they, I think the thing that unifies those two eras is that they had characters you would wait for every week. You'd want, you'd tune in cause you wanted to see Wayne's world. You tune in because right. you wanted to see the cheerleaders. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. And now, yep. now they don't do that as much. And so that I do oh, kind of, I wish they would kind of maybe go back to that. But really the feel of the last few years does feel to me like a little kind of like in the older kind of era of it back in the day. Yeah. But back in the day, they had great characters too. Coneheads, uh, mm. you know, just all kinds uh, Eddie Eddie Murphy had had buckwheat, and, uh, like yeah. you know, Mister uh, Mister Roger. What was his? What did he call his? Was it Mister Robinson? I can't remember. Yeah, but I mean, you know, so it's not like that. Erica era era didn't have characters, but this era doesn't doesn't have that to where you're gonna tune in every week because you want to see like the same, you know, kind of the same kind of skit, different. Right. Set up, but but the Dave Chappelle was a great one. The last week, did you watch the Amy Schumer one? 
No, I did not. <sighs> you know, Amy Schumer, she's hit and miss sometimes, but it's more miss than hits lately. So, so yeah, I, I, yeah. you know, <laughs> she had their own show at one time that I, when I watched that, I was like, man, I like her. I think she's funny. Mm-hmm. And then she had a couple movies, but she has gone downhill to me. <laughs> yeah. Maybe her humor was just a, for the time that it was, or I don't know, but, but yeah. that one wasn't great. <laughs> Megan the Stallion cracked me up. That one was good. I really liked that one. Uh, and then there was, there's a few others, but, oh, uh, Jack Harlow, is that his name? I didn't see that one. His was pretty good. His was decent. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm still not a big fan of his music, although I, I think it's good. It's just not for me. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Well, you want to get into some TV shows, some streaming stuff, Cameo? Yeah, let's do it. It's time to nerd flicks and chill with us. Just, uh, you know, crawl under that blanket with me and Cameo, and <laughs> we're going to watch some movies. <laughs> TV shows, the TVs, yeah, mostly TVs though for this one. Uh, uh, but yeah, it did it, it get really cold this week here in Oklahoma, so I, Man, I definitely I was been, not ready for it. <laughs> I, yeah, I took Friday off. I was like, nah, <laughs> nah, I ain't gonna be out in the snow. I ain't, I ain't doing this. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so I I watched a ton of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let's kick it off. Let's kick it off with Titans. Okay. Season four, episode three. Yeah, the title is called Jinx. Actually, um, Jinx's character was okay, but it it really reminded me of like it was a lot closer to the CW with the. I feel like with the meta human aspect of her and yeah. the way she turned into like a little nader there in the yard. Yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't like very impressed. <laughs> yeah this episode it it, it was interesting good. it wasn't I that the good. fight scenes yeah but it yeah overall it's like eh. yeah because Corey gets she gets uh turned to stone mm-hmm. because jinx has tried to steal like an elf heart and yeah that the, the the actual heart like when she looked in the box and saw the heart it turned her to stone mm-hmm yeah, so then they, uh, but they originally, why did they pull Jinx out of the prison? It wasn't, it was because they're trying to uh, track down the lady, right? The uh, yeah, the cult leader lady. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so then it became about Dick trying to, you know, get the spell undone. Yeah. To save Corey. Uh, let's see. Was there anything else that kind of stood out to you about this one? Um, no. Connor, uh, let's see. Yeah, now. Uh, there was a little bit of stuff with Gar, right? And his yeah. his deal, but I don't know. Like it just this episode didn't hit like the first two. Yeah, I feel like this is this was like a filler episode. Yeah. But that that's probably why they did the first two episodes. <laughs> uh instead of because I, I remember they usually do the first three episodes and like you said, the first two episodes were awesome. And then the third episode was like, ah, so maybe they were like, well, if we did the first three episodes, maybe they won't enjoy it. Maybe they won't come back. Right. I don't know, but I'm not sure what really is the plan for all of this. So, (laughs) yeah. Well, is it Sanger? Who mm-hmm. is Sanger? Is that the guy? That's the guy that uh, that is kind of like he's not all there. He's having troubles mentally, right? And she, mm-hmm. the the leader of the cult, like she's been kind of influencing him for mm-hmm. whatever reason. So they end up really uh, getting him out of there, right? Uh, Dick and yeah. them, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no. It was Connor. I remember because Connor smashes through like all the. Well, yeah. Dick drove the getaway car, but yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. 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 But I thought that was kind of a cool scene where Connor does bust through all the walls like that. Mm -hmm. That was kind of like the coolest part of the show, actually. (laughs) It really was. Yeah. (laughs) But other than that, yeah. Like this one uh, was, like you said, it was kind of a 
a little bit of a filler episode in my opinion so mm-hmm. you know it was what it was we're not going to spoil it too much because it just wasn't that great wasn't a whole yeah. lot worth spoiling other than what we right. just spoiled so <laughs> but yeah so they've got Sanger now and I, like that's what I was trying to figure out is she trying so in the first episode or the second episode actually you had the the dude in like the the robe and like the head mm-hmm. Is she trying to turn Sanger into one of those people or? No, I think it's like, I think that's like their, I think what, whatever Sanger's going through, like him having, you know, him not fully being there. I don't think he's his, his real person. And those are going to be his like minions. So I think he's like the, the God tier villain in the, in the show this, this season. Right. Yeah, I was so. just trying to look over to see if there was anything else that, uh, that, yeah. Then, okay, so Gar, um, while looking for Rachel, or after Rachel, Gar begins to hear the voices again, walks into the woods with Rachel, and they discover the tree in Gar's vision, and Gar hears a warning from the voices, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely setting it up for the next few episodes. I'm only seeing six episodes. Like that can't be. There's only going to be six episodes this season, is there? I hope not. That'd be awful. Because <laughs> yeah, that means we're halfway through already. Right. I feel like the CW does way too long, and HBO Max might be doing way too little. Right. <laughs> like I want ten. I'm good at ten. Well, see, I think it might be 10 because that's how um, when She-Hulk came out. Yeah. Um, IMDB was only showing like six episodes and it ended up being like nine. So I, I think there might be 10 because oh, the other. Ep- it says 12. The there other- will be 12. 12. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. So nice. we're a third. Cause- Sweet. No, we're a fourth of the way Quarter. There. Yeah. Yeah. Don't make me do math. That's why I'm doing podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, episode three, man. If you watch it, that you probably, you know, you you'll want to watch it if you're just dying for Titans like we were. But then, mm-hmm. if you're wanting to just skip to the next episode, I wouldn't blame you. Yeah. Here's one I've been uh, skipping around on lately, and or the ultimate, the ultimate filler. Uh, of episodes golly well i'm talking about eight is, nine and ten this, this is a filler season yeah it's it's <laughs> a slow burn man and i get it like every, you know when i see people talking about how much they love it they always talk about this is a gritty star wars and yada 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 and i'm just like i i is it though i would like to see a gritty star wars like about like darth maul but for this for this one with the rebels yeah i guess it's gritty but it's not it's not like that yeah. exciting and they, but they have really good episodes they have some really good ones and then in the meantime it is a lot of filler so you know with the last one we talked about was episode 7 mm-hmm. um 8 9 and 10 he gets arrested he ends up going to prison Mm-hmm. And uh, honestly, I, one of the reasons I tuned back in, we uh, we meet a new character played by Andy Circus, and uh, I was under the impression from what I read that because he played Snoke, you know, later on, mm-hmm. that this might be an early version of Snoke. I don't feel like that's the case at all. And then I read about it, and they were like, "No, is this." It's just another uh, a new character because in Snoke you didn't see Andy Circus's face you you know he just did the voice, which by the way, you know like back in the day he did the first time I became aware of him was Gollum right, and mm-hmm. then he was uh the voice of he did the voice work for the Planet of the Apes, mm-hmm. Caesar, but he's done movies including Black Panther movie the first one. Where Mm -hmm. he's had smaller roles, but like, or, you know, he was in the Batman as Alfred, but I think he's a good actor. Like, he's not just one of those people that are good at voice acting. 
And yeah. I was I thought he breathed a little bit of life back into this show for the couple episodes he was in. Did you get caught up oh. yet or did you watch anything yet? I watched um I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh I'm on season or not season, episode eight at the like I'm like five, ten minutes in. Oh, okay. So do you want me to give you spoilers or are we gonna say no spoilers? Uh I don't care. Well, I'll try to be delicate and I'll just say okay. that basically while they're in prison, they start finding out that what they thought was, you know, this system that the where they have these years or shifts that they have to do, they're sentenced to like mm. I think Andor's got like 2000 shifts that he has to do. Yeah, dang. Yeah. <laughs> so uh so they kind of find out that, well, they don't really track that stuff like they think. They're just kind of making it up as they go. Oh, that's horrible. And they're probably not getting out, right? Yeah. So when you start thinking like that, you're probably thinking it's time to try to escape. Yeah. So so leading up to, to that, it did get pretty uh, interesting and back to exciting, but but it's like I told you, like every few episodes are really awesome. And the ones leading up to them are like, oh my gosh. So mm -hmm. I'm still, I'm still feeling the same way about it. Oh, uh, okay. I feel like episode 10, you'll want to get, you'll want to watch it. You'll want to get up to it, but okay, it's a, it's a track, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> man. Well, I'll watch it. I'll watch it. But like yeah. I said, I'm on, on like the, on episode eight. And now there's only a couple more in. episodes left. So. Hopefully it's, you know, there <laughs> it's, it's, it's gone up like click, 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 click. And then, <laughs> you know, right. it's, it's going to fall off episode 12. I uh, know. I don't, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like, it took so long going up and now it's mm -hmm. like, it's in full gear. Like, yeah, hopefully it might 11 might be like, Oh my God. <laughs> Why am I still watching again, this? Again, yeah, again, jeez, yeah. So, um, that's where I stand on Andor. Okay. Some, you know, some weeks it's good, some weeks it's not. So, yeah. um, I do want to mention though, there's uh, Tales from the Jedi, right? Tales of the Jedi. Uh, Tales of the Jedi. I think yeah. So yeah, it's animated on Disney Plus, and we'll probably talk about that next week or something i need to i need to watch those but have you seen any yeah. of that yet yeah they're pretty good they're uh like 15 16 minutes long yeah uh, each episode so uh not nothing too too big uh but it mainly just focuses around ahsoka tano oh so really maybe this is like a prelude to um um uh, to her show yeah coming out possibly um just a few things that we want to recommend that are out on streaming. Uh, Tulsa King, I haven't seen this, but if you lived in Oklahoma, you probably heard of it because the Sylvester Stallone has been in Tulsa and Oklahoma City filming it over the summer. Mm -hmm. it, it's out mm -hmm. now on Paramount Plus. Have you? Oh, okay. have, have you been able to check it out yet? No, not yet. Not yet. Uh, do you have Paramount? Mm -hmm. Oh well, let me know. Let me know if it's any good. Uh, okay. I, I wanted to go. Uh, there was a few times where I wanted to go be one of the extras in it, but I ne I didn't have time. So yeah. And then here's a movie that uh, we saw over the summer and loved. It's coming to Peacock uh, this week, November eighteenth. Nope. Uh, you don't want me to say. You don't want me to tell anybody. Nope. Oh, nope. Okay. Well, never mind then. Uh, I will. <laughs> I will say this though. Uh, <laughs> You, you, if you haven't seen Nope, you got to watch it. Like, I loved it. Okay. But it was really good. What I thought was hilarious, my wife pointed this out too. My wife, <laughs> we were watching Siren Live, right? And there was an ad for it. And like, they spoil the crap out of it in the, <laughs> in the trailer that they run on Peacock. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Like, I was like, man, I hope everybody's seen it. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> like, yeah, it's pretty. Don't, don't watch the trailer on Peacock if you're, uh, if you're, if you haven't seen it yet and you still want right. to. But I'm gonna watch it again. Uh, yeah, that's I, a movie. I liked it, man, 
I I saw it twice in the theaters, and I feel like I'll probably watch it a few more times now that it's going to be streaming. Mm -hmm. You got yeah. any more recommendations before we're done here, Cameo, with Nerdflix and Chill and the show? Actually? Yeah, um, I got a I got a couple. Uh, Barbarian. Oh my gosh! Yeah, me and Gog are going to be talking cheap plug here uh, about that <laughs> movie and the career of Justin Long on Tales from the Dork Side. So go find that podcast, but. That movie yeah. was Ooh. nuts. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you my little re my little review of it sure. real quick. Oh my god, <laughs> it, it was wild, man! Like yeah. from you know, I'm not going to give any spoilers away, but I thought you know, watching the trailer, I thought it was going in one direction, and it went to a like it exactly. took a completely right turn. It, yeah, like it did. And that was kind of the same way with uh, uh, Lakeith Stanfield's movie, uh, Sorry to Bother You. Have you seen that movie yet? No, I haven't. Oh, dude. I don't think so. Watch that. Watch that. Oh, wait. Uh, cause it's yeah. Yeah, I have seen that. Okay. Well, that movie took a complete left turn, um, just like this movie did. Yeah. Because um, it wasn't what you saw in the trailer. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that movie was pretty good. Barbarians on also HBO Max, by the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also, uh, uh, oh my goodness, Don't Worry Darling with uh, Florence uh, Pugh yes. and Olivia Munn. Nick Kroll is Olivia in Olivia Wilde. Uh, yeah, Olivia Wilde's film. Um, a lot of people, there was a lot of hate uh, going around uh, about this movie and maybe because I went in with like low expectations. Um, but it was actually pretty good. I really enjoyed it. Um it was like a psychological thriller. Uh, yeah. Um, well, the 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 hate that was coming for the movie, I don't think had anything to do with the actual movie at first. Mm. But there was a lot of drama about this movie while from the beginning to while it was being made to even the promotion. And I'll just give you the brief synopsis. Shia LaBeouf was originally cast to play Harry Styles, right. the character that Harry Styles was played. Well. At some point, some of the stuff started coming out about him and FK Twigs. And I believe that was after this movie had already just begun. Mm -hmm. And it was it seemed to be that Florence Pugh was uncomfortable with, with doing the movie with Shia anymore. I don't know if there might have been other stuff going on, like his his behavior on set. I didn't hear anything necessarily about that. But that doesn't mean that that wasn't the case. It's just that I didn't hear that. Uh, mm -hmm. but there was all this other stuff going on and, you know, he's, he's been on like, uh, who's John Bernthal's podcast where he's talked yep. about how he's trying to change and all that. I hope he does, but it, the stuff that was coming out was bad and he's admitted to a lot of it. So that's just been out there. No, you know, we're no. not making that part up, but anyhow, he, uh, so he leaves the movie and I, I don't. I, you know, Olivia Wilde had said that she fired him. Well, mm -hmm. not too long before the release of the movie, he posts a video where he's recorded her calling him and basically saying that Flo Florence needs to like have a reality check or something and that she was wanting Shia to be, to stay in the movie and all that. So that kind of like mm -hmm. rubbed people the wrong way. Then... Mm -hmm. There was also the fact that, uh, you know, Jason Sudeikis, uh, he was in Siren Live and lately he's been Lasso, Ted Lasso. Mm -hmm. Well, him and Olivia Wilde were in a relationship and apparently she was cheating on him with Harry Styles, whom she had hired to play this character. And so they were having an affair on set that I guess Florence Pugh was not happy about as well. So all this goes... Yeah to the movies being released and Florence decides for whatever reason, I don't know for sure what the case was, whether uh, it was just her not wanting to, or there, there was something else nefarious going on, but she mm -hmm. refused to do any promotion. Like she could have just been busy. I don't know. She could have been recorded. You know, she's in every movie nowadays. Right. Um, and she'll be in Thunderbolts and all that. So, she might not have been able to, but she wasn't promoting the movie and going on the promotional tours and all that. 
So that's right. why this movie, before it was even in theaters, had garnered like a lot of people saying, well, I'll, I'm not going to watch that. Mm -hmm. And personally, I had no idea that it was what it turned out to be, like a suspense kind yeah, of thriller. Yeah, same here. Movie. And I kind of liked it, but I got to tell you, I fell asleep at the very end. You didn't miss much. Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> uh, it just, it was, it was a good movie, but I felt like ultimately it was kind of pointless. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. In a way. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. But yeah, so, that's also on HBO Max. Yes, so, it is. Uh, so check out those two movies. And yeah. then uh, once you watch Barbarian, make sure you uh, listen to Tales from the Dork Side. Yeah. Cameos listen to it all of no times, but that's okay. All of no times because uh, I'm not going to watch those movies. That they <laughs> you watch, watch Barbarian. So, yeah, but that was because... I didn't know what to put on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thought I, it was, I, I was going to be like some crazy psycho dude, mm -hmm. um, which what I got from the trailer. And like I said, it went a yeah. uh, completely opposite direction. <laughs> I just want to say, though, that that movie and dang near every movie this guy is in, Justin Long, like he's, he makes every movie like even better than it probably deserves to be. <laughs> he really does. He really so, does. So we'll talk. <laughs> Me and Gar are gonna like talk a lot about his movies in the podcast this week. So I'll, I'll definitely have to listen to that because I like Justin Long. Me too. And uh, yeah. you, uh, you used to hang out with his brother, so that that's also a thing. Just one time, <laughs> <laughs> we got drinks one time. And did uh, did y'all conversate? Did y'all like have uh, a bro hug? Yeah, you did. That you bro hugged. It. Yeah, yeah. You know, like the little, you know. Oh Shake wow! Hand, you know. Oh yeah. wow! So you're almost you almost bro hug Justin Long because he looks almost. just like him. Yeah, yeah. There you go. It's uncanny. Like I, because <laughs> that's a story for another time. It's not really a big story. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> well, I was like, oh man, that's Justin Long, and my friend was like, no, it's not. That's his brother. I was like, yeah. oh, didn't know he had a brother. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> but like, if I ever have to play six degrees of Justin Long's brother, I can be like, well. My friend bro hugged him, so there you go. There you go. And you bro hugged me, so. I don't think I ever have. Yeah, you I have. Don't, I don't think I ever would. You would. <laughs> All right, Cameo. Well, I've got <laughs> tapes to return, so I'm getting out of here. All right. And uh, I'm going to go take some pictures. <laughs> Keep it nerdy. Smile and put on a happy face. Wakanda <laughs> forever! This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. <laughs> that was awesome. Freeze all motor functions. Hey,